Yes, brethren and sisters, we're going to go into this lesson today. We're going to call this one Genesis the Creation. That's Genesis the Creation. And we know Moses was the one who wrote the creation story that we read in Genesis, right? And we're going to get a precept right now that show you that um, Moses gets specific instruction and commandments from the Mosai before he write the creation story that we read of in Genesis. We know Moses was the one who write from Genesis to Deuteronomy, right? So let's go look at this instruction that was given to Moses, right, before he write these books, right? So the first precept we're going to go to right now, um, we're going to go to the Apocrypha, right? And we're going to go to Second Ezra, chapter 14, and we're going to start from 1. And it came to pass upon the third day, as I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me, and it said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses, and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. And I sent and led my people out of Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount of where I held him by me a long season, right? And we know Moses was up there 40 days and 40 nights, right? But that's not a long season with the Mosai, right? Um, for us, it was 40 days and 40 nights when Moses returned but Moses was there longer than that right it will tell you in the next verse right and I told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end right so Moses was shown the secret of the times right from the beginning all the way to the end that's a long time but for us, when Moses was brought back, only 40 days have passed. But we know Moses saw from the beginning all the way up to the end. Everything, right? And command him saying, right? So when Moses returned, Moses was instruction to write down what he see, right? Command him saying, these words thou shalt declare, and these thou shalt hide, right? So when Moses is writing the book of Genesis, um, Exodus, all the way up to Deuteronomy, some things are hidden, and some things are just plain for everyone to see, right? Now, we're going to go to Second Ezra. We're going to still stay here in Second Ezra, but this time we're going to go to um, chapter 12, right? So Moses was given specific instruction on how to write Genesis. It's not all going to be plain for everyone to know what is written, right? So Second Ezra chapter 12, and we're going to start at 36, right? No. Second Ezra chapter 12 verse 36. Now this is an angel talking to Ezra, right? Um, Thou only have been meet to know the secret of the Mosai. Therefore write all these things that thou art seen in a book and hide them. So we see the, Mo, um, the Mosai tell Moses, um, some things when you write in you know the books of what you see some things make it plain and some things 
hide it. Now we see the angels is telling Ezra some of the some of these secrets. Now the angel is said hide it in a book, write it down and hide it. Not write the book and go put the book under a rock. Write it, but write it in a way that it is hidden, right? Now the next precept after this we're gonna show you how it was written, right? To be hid inside the book, right? So let's read that again. Only thou has been me to know the secrets of the time of the eyes. Therefore write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them and teach them to the wise of thy people. Right? So obviously Ezra didn't go put the book under a rock because he's supposed to teach it to his people. Right? Those whose art thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secret, right? So the secret in this book, when it's been revealed, not all of us is going to accept it, right? Some is going to reject it, as the scripture is saying right here, but some of us will accept it, right? So teach it to... The, Teach these secrets to your people, those who are able to comprehend these secrets, right, and understand them. Now, Moses was told to make something plain and some hidden in the book. Ezra was shown some secret, but he was supposed to write it in a book, write everything you've seen in a book, but hide it. Now we're going to get the precept to show you how things are hidden in this book, right? We're going to go to the New Testament, right? And we're going to go to the book of uh, Matthew, right? Chapter 13. And we're going to go all the way down to 34. All these things spake the Savior of Israel unto the multitude in parables. Now, before we go anywhere, let's look what this word parable mean, right? I have the, the Greek strongs over here, right? And the Greek number is 3850, right? And similitude, right? Fictitious narrative now similitude and fictitious narrative this is how the Mosa is going to hide these things in the book now I do a lesson um, recently called um, Genesis the trees of the garden so we use you know instead of using real people fictitious characters right instead of using real people in Genesis to represent nations we're going to use trees, right? So that's some of the secrets or some of the things that are hidden in the book of Genesis that Moses wrote, right? Trees, you know, we, we see the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, and the trees that Adam went to go hid amongst, right? All those were talking about nations, different types of different kinds of nation in Genesis right different nations in Genesis I did the lesson and posted already now parable we use fictitious characters to represent real characters right let's continue and Without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, right? Saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Wait a minute. The foundation of the world, we're talking Genesis right here. So there's a lot of secrets down in Genesis. 
the most I tell Moses when you're writing all these books um, you're gonna write it in a way that a lot of it is gonna be hidden some things are gonna be pl make plain right but some things are gonna be hidden most of it will be hidden in the book right so when we read of this snake talking a fictitious character right snake don't talk the snake represents a nation of people down there right when you read it and if you know how to find the precepts because that's how you get the understanding and, and and get these secrets you have to do precepts as the scripture tell you right um, let's continue right so now when we go back to Genesis right because we now we see that it's written in a way right in parables we're gonna use fictitious characters right and similitudes to hide these secrets right now let's go to Genesis right the book of Genesis chapter 1 and we're gonna start from Genesis cause in this lesson we're gonna talk about the creation right because every time I hear um, whether Hebrew Christian or anybody read Genesis they all read it the same they just read over these words nobody try to explain what this mean or what this mean right or what that mean they just read over it um, seems like everybody just satisfied with us in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth that's it right okay but let's go to Genesis and let's see if we could get out some of these secrets that are done in Genesis again right so Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning right now they translate translated um this word right here as god right but the hebrew word is elohim right um meaning powers right more than one in this creation more than one being in this creation i'm going to explain that in a little bit and i'm going to use precepts right powers right not the Mosai powers right created the heavens and the earth or Elohim created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep right now this deep right here um, the Hebrew number is um, 8415 and the Hebrew word is Teom, right? And an abyss, a surge, gin mass of water. So a real, a, an abyss, so it's deep, right? This is the deep that we read of in scripture that Esau could never search out. It's not talking about the ocean or here, right? Um, a surging mass of water so a chaotic water right darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of Elohim right the powers moved upon the face of the water right and this word water right here the Hebrew word is Mayim and the Strong's number is 4325 Mayim, that's water, right? Now, we're going to go get some precept right now because we want to know um, who are these um, Elohim. And this is in the scripture. Who are these Elohims are these powers that was moving over this water, right? Um, before you hear of anything else you read and then this gathering of these Elohim over this water right now I have the um, the Lexham English um, Bible over here right slightly different translation than the King James Version Bible right so let's read it over here right um, verse 2 now the earth was formless 
and empty and darkness was upon the face of the deep right that deep that chaotic water that teum right and the spirit of elohim was hovering right so they were hovering over this water now when you go into strong right the word moved over here and you go into strong also it said right here they were fluttering right hovering or or to brood meaning they gather together so they're gathering together to do something right these elohims right to do something over this water right now let's go we're gonna come back here but let's go get um, some precepts right now that show you what they were doing over the waters right because the Bible said precept must be upon precept right now the first precept we're gonna go to right is um, the book of Proverbs Proverbs 8 right Proverbs 8 and we're gonna start at um, verse 22 Proverbs 8 verse 22 and we're gonna read it over here in the Lexham Bible right but I have the the King James Version Bible over here I link them so if I go anywhere in the Lexham Bible the King James Bible will be right there you could read it in there also right so the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 we want to see what they were doing over this water right and we also going to find out who were these Elohims that was gathering over this water to do something right brooding um, hovering right moving over this water right Yahweh created me the first of his ways now everybody read this in uh, this chapter in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 we know it's talking about Christ right but we're gonna go to another precept right this to find out you know if this is talking just about Christ right okay stay with me Yahweh created me the first of his ways before the acts of old and yes we know Christ was the first soul that was created right from eternity I was set up from the first from the beginning of the earth when there was no depth right the 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 tail the, the deep surging mass of water right I was brought forth when there was no springs of abounding water before the mountain have been shaped before the hills I was brought forth when he had not yet made the earth or the field or the first dust of the earth so this person is saying right here this being is saying right here before even dirt was created the most I already created him right when he established the heavens I was there right establish the heaven mean he was the one that prepared it right the most I but we read that we go back in Genesis it was Elohim that created the heavens and the earth but right here we read that the most I prepared it right but this person said I was there when he was preparing it right when he draw a circle upon the face of the deep right so when they were hovering over this deep that we read of in Genesis right they were drawing a circle on the face of the deep now before any kind of construction right we know of today on earth right any building whether you know rectangular shape or circular shape 
they put lines down on where the foundation is gonna be right so they were getting ready to do something now they drawing a line on the surface of the deep and this deep right here is the same one you read in um, Genesis the tail the chaotic water the mass of surging water it's the same one the tail right okay now we see as I mentioned before we know this is ultimately talking about Christ right here but let's go see if Christ was the only one there with the father right now we're gonna go to the book of Job right Job chapter 38 and we're gonna start from 1 right let's read it over here in the King James Version Bible I might go over here in the Lexham Bible, but let's just read it over here in the King James Bible, right? Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark, darkened counsel by words without knowledge, right? Now, when you read the book of Job with, with some understanding, you'll see that the whole book of Job is... is you know it's kind of like a similitude of what Israel will go would go through right we're the one when you use um, like Lazarus and the rich man um, with those putrefying sores right now meaning we're in a low state in the bottom of all society right um, no we are at the point right now where we have people darkening the counsel of the Mosai, right? We're going to read about creation and see how the counsel is darkened today. What what is been taught as creation today, right? To again, who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge, right? And when they talk about creation, they give you a bunch of theories right guesswork I mean the scripture also said they mouth drip honey so they tell you some nice stuff right but it's all I guess it's all theories right words without knowledge example they will tell you about a thing called a black hole in space right they've never seen one but they, they will tell you how it work or the, the inner workings of it they will tell you what happened when light tried to pass over it they will tell you what happened when you've been sucked into it and they will tell you what happened when you are inside it but they have never seen one they'll tell you all that words without knowledge sounds good make them sound important like they know something but it's words without knowledge right none of them can go look that's one right there I've been inside it I've been around it I examine it words without knowledge right gird up your lines like a man for I will demand of thee and answer thou of me now Job I am going to ask you some questions and I want you to answer me, right? Where, were thou, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth, right? Now remember in Genesis, they were hovering over this deep water. In the book of Proverbs, they were drawing a circle, right, on this water. And before... as I mentioned before I said it before before any construction of any building you first laid out lines before you lay the foundation now the most I saying where was Job when he laid the foundation of the earth we read in Proverbs also someone said they were there right they was there I was there right declare if thou as understanding right now let's read it over here um, in the in the Lexham English Bible right we're gonna read the same thing 
where were you at my laying of the foundation of the earth? It's a question. Tell me if you possess understanding. Who determined its measurements? Who determined, Job, how big it's going to be when we're laying down this foundation or laying out this line? Who determined how big it's going to be? We read in Proverbs that the Most High prepared it. So he determined how big it's going to be. Right? But listen to this. Yes, you do know. So if Job should know that question that was asked to Job, Job should have said, Yes, I know, I know the terminal big it was. I was there. We read that someone said he was there. But we read in Genesis it was powers, meaning it was more than one. It was Elohim, right? Okay, let's continue. Are who stretched are who stretched stretched the measurement line upon it? The, the line they put upon the deep, we read. Who put that line upon the deep? Right? Or and what are its bases sunk? Right? So in this deep chaotic water, right? Where is the foundation? Let's read it over in the King James Bible so you could get a better understanding, right? Six, right? Whereupon are the foundation of the earth fastened? So if the earth have a foundation, right? What is that foundation in? Now this house have a foundation. The foundation of this house is in the earth now the most is asking job if the earth have a foundation what is that foundation in what what is the earth fastening to now back to people who are dark in council now the the, the council today right or the knowledge of this world tell you that the earth is spinning in space is that what it's saying here in the Bible? The Bible is saying the earth is fastened into something. That means it's not moving, right? But as we read before, we're only going to teach this to our people who will comprehend it. Even though it's written right here like this, because of indoctrination of these words, Without knowledge, a lot of people are not going to accept this. But it's telling you plain right here in the scripture. The earth is fastened into something, right? Let's continue. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Not only the earth of foundation, it also have a cornerstone. Now, every building you know of, uh, some, you know, a, a chief column post, Right? Meaning, if you want to demolish this building, you take out the chief column post and everything come crashing down. It said the earth is the same way. It have a chief column post. Meaning, if that one give way, this whole thing come crashing down. Now, we could read in scripture that at Christ's second return, he said he will shake the foundation of the earth. And the earth and the heaven will shake. That tell me they are connected too. It's not earth here and heaven is way over there. It tell me they are connected. If it's going to shake the foundation and earth and heaven is going to shake, that means they are connected. Right? So the earth also have a cornerstone. It have a foundation. And it's fastened into something else. We don't know what it's fastened into. It's right here in the scripture. Now, we're reading right now of um, creation, right? Because we're reading about drawing a line, right? Um, cornerstone and foundation, right? Something is being created. Now, what happened when it was all finished? It tells you right here in verse 7. When the morning stars sang together so after it was finished 
these Elohim that was hovering over this water after it was finished what they were doing. We're going to go back to Genesis and go into a little bit more detail of what they were doing. But when it was finished, there was a celebration. Because I'm reading right here. They were singing, right? And all the sons of the Mosai shouted for joy. Now for years people have been telling me that these are these sons of God are angel. Oh the, 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 the morning stars are archangel and the sons of God are just angels. Right? But from reading the scripture, right? Um the Mosai uh will chose will have mercy on Jacob and he had chose Israel. It, it's, it's saying the same thing right here. Even though it said morning stars and sons of God, talking about the same thing, right? Now, from precept, we can't read everything today. We know the stars of the Mosai in the Bible is the nation of Israel. You, we could read that from um, uh, Isaiah 14, right? We could read that in Revelation 12, the woman with the crown of 12 stars. Joseph dream talking about his 11 brothers as the 11 stars right now we again we know only the nation of Israel are called sons of the most high angels were never called the sons of the most high let's go to the precept to show you that right now we're gonna go to the book of um, the book of Hebrew in the New Testament um, In the New Testament and we're gonna to go to Hebrew 1 and we're gonna read verse 5 right for unto which of the angels said he at any time now you got to show me this in the scripture when he when he said this to any angel thou art my son but he said it to a man right was Christ today you are my son right this day have I begotten thee, right, at that baptism, right, Mary and Joseph's son, it was said, that was said to a man, right, and again, now listen to this part, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, now, we know when he was walking when he was here as the Christ this wasn't said to him who was it said to in scripture this was said to Solomon right um, I'm not gonna read it all I'm gonna give you three precept where it said this about Solomon right now um, by the mouth of two or three witnesses uh, matter is, is established right I'm going to give you three precepts. I'm only going to read one of them for the sake of time, right? Um, Solomon, it, it was said about Solomon that, you know, watch this quote you read right here. I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Um, 2 Samuel 7 verse 14, right? And the next one, the next precept is 1 Chronicles 17 verse 13, was said again the most I said that about Solomon that he's gonna be Solomon father and Solomon is gonna be his son right now the one I'm gonna read just one for the sake of time right is um is first Chronicles chapter 28 right first Chronicles chapter 28 oh that's second so first Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 6 I'm gonna start from verse 6 and it doesn't matter in this precept I've, if I when you read them if you read just the precept I give to you or if you read the old chapter in its entirety it's gonna say the same thing right now and of all my sons this is David talking and of all let me go to the point I'll just read six you guys could read it all yourself 
he said unto me, still David talking, and he said unto me, the most I said unto David, right, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son. Angels were never called the sons of the Mosai. Men from the nation of Israel is called the sons of the Mosai, right? Solomon right here. And I will be his father. That's the quote. Uh, that's what we just read over in um, Hebrews, right? So angels was never called the sons of the Mosai. So these these sons of the Mo the sons of the Mosai, and the stars of the Mosai that was singing and shouting, right? Have to be the nation of Israel back there. Right, cause the word Israel mean prince and power with the Mosai. So all these powers back there that was with the Mosai before creation have to be in Israel. Right? That's one of the things hidden in Genesis. That's why all through scripture you will read that we are the ancient ones. Right? Now now we just read here in uh, First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse six, that the Mosai said um, he's gonna be a father to Solomon, and Solomon is gonna be his son, right? But now when we go to um, the book of Isaiah, right? Isaiah chapter forty-three. And we're going to read verse 6. Now we know Israel um, is scattered to the four corners of the earth, right? Now, in the end, that's what we're going to read here in, um, in the book of Isaiah when we're going back. This is what the Mosa is going to say to the nations that were scattered in, right? I will say to the north give up and to the south keep not back bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth right these are not angels the most i is talking about these are men and women from the nation of israel those are his sons and his daughters. He never said to any angel, you are my son. Right? Let's read one more. Right? We're going to go to the book of Ephesians to show you that we were before the creation. The nation of Israel only. Not these other um, nations you see because all the other nation was created after the creation to serve us they were always created to serve us right now we're gonna go to the book of Ephesians right one more before we go back to Genesis the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and we're gonna read from 3 blessed be the most I our father and our Savior the Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly place places in Christ according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world us us we read Christ saying before he laid the foundation I was there the question was asked to Job when the foundation was laying where were you you know right we know because we you know we keep coming back again we forget as what it said in Ecclesiastes right but the sons of the Mosai was always there that's why we have this name Yasharal Prince and power with him right let's let's read that again Four. According at he, as he had chosen us in him before the foundation 
of the world now that us we're talking about Israel now that we should be holy only one people the most I said is holy read Deuteronomy and that's Israel we should be holy and without blame before him in love so we were chosen before earth was made we were before this earth was made and as I said that's why the scripture keep calling us the ancient ones he is the ancient of days we are not the ancient of days he is but we are the ancient ones right prince and power with him before anything we were with him that's what the word mean right that's a name they try to get rid of we were with him right tell you in Genesis right powers created it not one powers we know Israel is the only power with the Most High. right five I've been predestinated us unto the adoption of children by the Savior the Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will so we were chosen before the foundation of the earth we were predestined before the foundation of the earth when he designed everything and the other souls that he was going to create it to serve us we were always going to be his son right now so when we go back to Genesis right to Genesis 1 now when we read two again we know we know right what was going on uh, well let's start from one in the beginning Elohim right powers uh, we just get all these precepts that show you who are these powers with the most side that it was Israel we were before the creation so all these Elohim that was doing all this creation was a nation of Israel yes under the leadership of Christ right hovering over this water to create something when it was finished we read in Job that we were happy we were celebrating we were singing and shouting for joy right created the heavens and the earth now we know who these Elohims are it's not the Mosai we read in in a um, in Proverbs that the most I was the one that prepared it like draw the blueprint then these powers go execute it right that's why we could read precept that said he spoke and it was done right the most is not a magician oh you know like these movie you watch oh let there be light and you know you see darkness and a light just appear our you know Harry Potter style no the most I said I want a light over there guess what these powers that are with him go make the light right that's how it work he's a creator he's not a magician right and his children have to be of creative power too we just read it in um, I think it's in Ephesians we are blessed with all spiritual gifts don't look like we have them right now but we will as we were blessed with those spiritual gifts right and the earth was without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep and we see what was going on you know we read it in this deep water well let's read it and continue the tale right and the spirit of Elohim right these powers moved or over or flutter our brood as we see um, upon the face of the water right they were getting ready to do something right um, we're gonna go into more detail right now as we read on what they were doing right we already read in Job you know when it was finished there was a celebration right so let's continue and see what they were hovering over this water drawing this circle and this water to see what they were going to do it's all in Genesis right now we're going to skip down to Genesis 6 right and we're going to start from there to see what 
these LOM or these powers was doing when they were hovering over this water drawing a circle on this water right so Genesis 1 verse 6 